I'm Mike from St. Thomas Economic Development here with another little update from the St. Thomas Mega Site. Okay, Nathan, great of you to join us on this lovely pile out here with strong eye contact on the Yarmouth Yards industrial site. Uh, far behind us over there, uh, and Graydon's got some closer footage we'll use, um, there is a sewage pumping station going in at the far southeastern corner of, uh, of Yarmouth Yards. What's going on over there, Nathan? Yeah, Mike, we're building a brand new sewage pumping station, which we're calling the Yarmouth sewage pumping station. Uh, that pumping station will be servicing the uh, greater lands of the uh, industrial park um, that will provide uh, much needed sanitary servicing uh, for the park for future industries that are going to be coming here. Uh, that sounds good. Now, this is not the first pumping station, but this is different than the water supply pumping station coming in. Do you use the same pumps or different pumps, same size, different size? What does that look like? Yeah, it's a whole different type of pump. It's a grinder pump because uh, unfortunately when you have a sewage pumping station, some stuff can go in there that's a little different than in a water uh, pump. So it's a grinder pump that grinds everything that comes up into it and then uh, pushes it out from there. So yes, handling dirty water, Mike. You know, I do know a few things about plumbing and there's three rules about plumbing that I was taught that every plumber is taught, uh, which is that payday is on Friday and uh, poop runs downhill yep. and don't put your tools in your mouth. How I'm tying this back into this is, is this like a low point on the site? Why was this uh, chosen as the spot to bring everything to then pump it somewhere else? Mike, you are astute in your observations. Yes, that is the lowest point in the whole industrial park, that southeast corner of the site. So that makes logical sense where to put that pumping station. All, everything comes to that pumping station by gravity and sewers that are several meters deep, goes into a very large wet well. Uh, that's uh, the whole pumping station is about eight meters deep. And then from there, uh, the pumps will grind everything up, pump it up and into a force main that actually will connect into some gravity sewers again on South Edge Road extension. Okay, now with this, is there anything notable about the construction of this pumping station? Uh, the pumping station has a shoring system that's being put in right now that keeps the workers safe when they're working at those depths, right? We can't uh, just put someone in there. We have to make sure everyone's safe when they're doing the work. So there's a shoring system where there's some piles put in the ground with some wood lagging that uh, creates a safe space for the contractor to work. And then from there, they will start forming the walls and the base and pull and getting out of the ground uh, with, the, with the associated concrete works and plumbing works, etc. How far under the ground do the pumps sit? About eight meters, yeah, eight meters to the bottom. So those sitting at the very bottom of it, yeah, four pumps. So that's like almost four Nathan Bokmas. That is, I am two meters tall. Very good, Mike. I think you're a little more than two meters tall. I think, I mean, Matt weight is maybe like two meters and a couple centimeters. Uh, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> All right. Well, Nathan, thank you uh, once again for joining us at one of the highest points of the site to talk about one of the lowest points of the site. Um, only uh, in terms of elevation, not in terms of anything else. Um, but I hope we can get you back soon to talk about something else on the site. Looking forward to it, Mike. Oh, yeah. You know, these guys, they thought they won in 2024. You know, these, these, these bunch of overworked fellas over at the fire hall thought they were gonna win this cornhole tournament. Did they really think that we were actually gonna miss? Our aim is second to none. Well, I don't remember uh, us not winning something against the police. It's been tradition that uh, we've won everything we've played in. And Chief Roskamp, he's a great leader in this city. Uh, but I think his skill resided back in the day of being a, a great volleyball player. So I don't think Cornhole is on his resume or, you know, and, and he's a good golfer, but uh, I don't think we lost in Cornhole. I don't think we've lost at anything. You know, we may have lost at, you know, maybe races to Tim Hortons or something like that, but I don't think that happened either. So um, again, Chief Roskamp's a great guy, but maybe his memory's failing a little bit. You know, why don't we challenge you to a good old-fashioned game of road hockey? Prepare yourselves to lose again. Road hockey? Seriously, Chief Roskamp? This is what St. Thomas Fire does. The understanding is a little three-on-three -three hockey, ice hockey, road hockey, St. Thomas Fire has us. We have a trophy from the original Guns and Hoses that still resides at 305 Longton. Look behind me, some solid hockey players, great firefighters and enforcers, We'll see you soon. Cheers, my friend. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe on YouTube and stay tuned for another little update coming soon. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button.